I have very few viewers today, but that's okay. Probably because IPL mostly. A lot of people watching IPL. Put that over here. Throw Skype up. Let's go to League Chat. All right, I think I'm ready to cast officially. All right, thanks for tuning in, guys. We are watching PR versus Infuse. This is the start of the Gosu League qualifier number three. Um, my name is Purge, and I'm here to entertain you for the day. We have a couple hours of awesome fun to happen. Um, did I Facebook advertise? Yeah, I did. So I think everything should be good. Make sure it's on Twitter as well. We got likes. We got favorites. It is a pretty early Saturday morning, but we should have plenty of viewers streaming in any second here. And surprisingly going to see a two highly ranked teams, moderately highly ranked, in the first round, so um, not the best situation for either PR or Infuse here. Somebody's going to get eliminated from this tournament right off the bat for 64 teams. It's a 64 team tournament. We're upping the Saturday qualifier to 64 teams and the Wednesday qualifier at 32. The reason we did this only on Saturdays is because most people don't have that much time to play on a Wednesday night, unfortunately. So uh, that's what ends up happening. So uh, starting things off, looks like Pierre is going to ban out a Nature's Prophet and Infuse goes for the uh, Leshrec. And we are going to squeeze into some extra time here before Infuse does their second and third round banning. I don't know if PR got seeded. I think they there were some issues with them getting seeded or something like that. So that is going to prove to be a problem uh, for either one of these teams in the first round. So um, Ricky Mar is going to get banned as well from Infused, and the Radiant team is going with a Lycanthrope. So. Okay, so cool. Like and throw ban as well, and now we see a tide hunter. Radiant team ban. And one more ban coming out of PR before we get started. So gonna be a sweet game. Chen's gonna get banned as well. Dire team pick. And now we're going into the first round pick, so uh Infuse is gonna start it off. And who is the Imba here? We still have an anti-mage in the pool, we still have a windrunner in the pool. That's definitely a possibility. Uh, Enchantress could be picked up by Infuse. They've been playing Enchantress a lot lately. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. And they're taking a sweet time here. They're going to burn through a little bit of bonus time. They will first pick an anti mage though. So now PR is going to be able to build their team around this. I'm going to guess a Rexar as well as a Windrunner pick. Both very, very good disables. And they're going to pick, oh god, Invoker is still in the pool. <laughs> I hear I completely overlooked you. So Invoker does get drafted. Uh, Invoker Windrunner or Invoker Beastmaster is my assumption what PR is going to go for. Both of those heroes would give great disables. Invoker is actually very good against Anti-Mage. Cold Snap is wonderful. Uh, there's a lot of other really good items that are great against Anti-Mage. Uh, other heroes, sorry. Uh, Windrunner long disables. Beastmaster long disables. And they're actually going to go for an Earthshaker. PR is one of the few teams that actually really likes playing Earthshaker. Uh, Complexity is probably one of the other teams that actually favors him, but most teams, they just don't even play Earthshaker anymore. He used to be an absolute stable pick for everybody, but surprisingly, uh, only PR and Complexity really value the hero over heroes like Crystal Maiden. And for some good reason, um, Earthshaker has Fissure, but I mean... He can't do much else other than that. Uh, even like early game enchant totem stuns are very, very unlikely. It's even dangerous to go for that because the stun is so meager compared to what you can accomplish with it. 
and how much danger it puts you in since Earthshaker is a melee hero. So a lot of teams just prefer to say, I'm going to play Crystal Maiden instead. I don't want to play Earthshaker. Earthshaker provides a lot more stuns, and obviously Echo Slam Blink Dagger is amazing, but... Yeah. So... Two more picks coming from the Dire team. It's about a minute left here. Uh, we'll see how they react to this. I th Windrunner is still in the pool here. I think this is a pretty big mistake. One issue with PR's drafting here, like I said, Earthshaker doesn't see a lot of play. He almost never gets picked, and when he does, it's only a couple teams that do it. But did they really expect Infuse to steal it from them? I don't think Infuse plays Earthshaker. There's not a lot of teams that do play Earthshaker at the moment. So why not grab a Windrunner or something? But Infuse is going to go for an Enigma as well as a Sand King. And currently they have really good heroes. Great team fight. Echo Slam, I'm sorry, yeah, Epicenter as well as Enigma Black Hole. Um, and PR is going to finish up with a Crystal Maiden. So they're definitely going for some kind of a tri lane. They may go a hard carry tri lane. But Ricky Mario is already out of the pool, which is the Anti Mage counter, which hasn't been that successful the last couple days that we have seen Ricky Mario versus Anti Mage. Um, Dark Seer is going to get banned as well as a Broodmother. This is going to be sweet stuff. And a Shadow Demon as well from Infuse. Shadow Demon, a nice counter to Anti Mage that uh, could be drafted by PR as their one of their solo heroes or farm dependent heroes. SD could actually go into Tri Lane, kind of fun. Um, but we'll see. Uh, PR is definitely lined up to get a hard carry. Uh, could do something like a Slarder it's, and, as well. That would also be pretty strong. Slarder is good against Anti Mage with that amp damage, lowers his armor by a lot. And we still have two more picks to come. Uh, it is PR's, and no, I'm sorry, it's Infuse's turn. And they're going to go for a support pusher. It's going to be a Venomancer, so they're going to be able to stack up them wards. Um, Venomancer wards, wonderful stuff, man. So good at pushing, good at counter pushing. And at the moment, PR has absolutely inadequate counter push measures. Well, look, they have Fissure, they have maybe Crystal Maiden, I guess, if you count that. Invoker obviously does have a lot of counter push, but only in the mid game, usually. Early game is a little rough. So at the moment, I think uh, PR's lineup is not looking nearly as strong as Infuse and Infuse. Or PR is actually going to go for a Weaver tri lane. Uh, possibly. They might throw Weaver top. The mic through Weaver bot. And Weaver is kind of a hit or miss hero with, against Anti Mage because if he's in a Lanian situation against Anti Mage, Anti Mage can easily just drain his mana, and a Weaver without mana is a very squishy low HP hero. And that's not fun. So, so far, I, I don't know if PR's lineup here is going to quite work out, but we'll see. Maybe they'll have a really effective tri lane. Weaver can work quite well on a tri lane, and the final pick from Infuse is going to be a Tinker. So they're playing very similar to kind of what EG has been doing the last couple weeks, which is a lot of team fight, some good pushing, and a Tinker as well for global. Uh, positioning and things like that. Uh, PR does have one pick left. Probably looking for a solo top, perhaps. Um, and they're actually going to play an Omni Knight. So somebody in chat saying, why no Omni Knight? Well, you're going to see it this game, at the very least. Uh, Omni Knight, his abilities are great. You can keep people alive very easily. And he's actually going to be able to cast a Repel on Weaver. And that's, that's very dangerous, actually. Uh, the, on the downside for the rainy team, they're still talking about a lot of burst damage coming out of Tinker, so that is not going to be fun. And now I'm going to be boss and remember my overlay. There we go. Beautiful. Isn't it beautiful, guys? Ugh. All right, here we go. Let me just make sure that it's centered. It is not centered. <laughs> And there we go. I, I think this must not be at the center of the screen or something. We're going to see a very, very slight pause. Let me adjust my scroll speed. I did actually get to play some games yesterday. Or the day before. I can't remember. Nice and fluid. Good calm river. Alright, for the Radiant team, this is PR. We have uh, ASDL playing the Omni Knight. Illidan Strength playing the Weaver. We have Raint playing the Earthshaker. Um, something, something. I don't even know how to start that. That's Crystal Maiden. And the uh, Invoker has this Chinese character. I believe his name is ZXCD or something like that, if I check his Steam profile here. And we go over here. He is, yeah, ZXC. So, primarily ZXC. For the Dire Team, Infused, we have Wegamama in here somewhere. Uh, actually, it doesn't look like... Oh, yeah, there he is. Um, Wegamama, our Sand King going to be playing. Played by Wegamama. 
Mini is uh, Enigma. We have EGM for Tinker. Nico Robinson, or Region, sorry, is playing uh, Anti Mage. And finally, Fishbone on Venomancer. So, Infuse's entire lineup is here. They are going to be ready to go. So, and yeah, as you guys can see, registration for Qualifier 4 is still opened. Play.ghostgamers.net for more information. So, if you guys want to play in that, go to the website. The next qualifier is on Wednesday. It's every Wednesday and Saturday that we do cast these. And every Saturday from here on out is a 64 team bracket. That's 300 some players. All getting a chance to be qualified for the Ghost League Cup. Unknowns, well known teams, either way. Uh, the Ghost League is pretty sweet. So, uh, we got Mouse qualified, last qualifier. Uh, and before that, the first one was Captain Planet, who's a brand new team, pretty much uh, veteran players, a couple veteran players. But it was fun to see them do really well because uh, now they're going to be a little bit more of a feature in upcoming Dota. So, always happy to see that. And it looks like it's going to be an offensive tri lane Weaver, Crystal Mated, and Earthshaker. Mid lane is the Invoker, and bot lane is going to be. And Omni Knight. So if there's decent pushing towards the bot lane, um, PR will have a little bit of trouble. But it's not like there's obscenely huge pushing out of Infuse. They don't have a Leshrac and they don't have a Nature's Prophet. Those are probably the two strongest pushers in the very early game. They actually might hold. Oh, they're gonna finish your block on Tanker. He's in a lot of trouble. Urshik, you're going for the block. Crystal Maiden getting ready to frostbite, and there it is. A couple more hits, and that is definitely gonna be first blood. Nice pick off from PR. Great fissure from Raint. And that is exactly why Earthshaker, at times, is more valuable than any other possible hero. Because you get Fissure blocked and screwed over. It's going to be double damage. It looks like Fish Capone's going to be able to snag this one. And he'll be happy about that. But a great first blood from PR. Starting it off right. Showing the power of Earthshaker. Those Fissure blocks, man. They are good. Now, ASDL is on the bot lane. It's going to be Soling as an Omni Knight. Looks like he's going to be up against an Enigma. And with his Stout Shield picked up, he will have some great damage protection against Eidolons. He's probably going to have a pretty easy time soloing. When the mid game comes, if he has a decent farm, it's going to be very, very useful for heroes like Invoker, for heroes like Weaver as well. And we'll see if his support is going to be enough to uh, possibly win them the game. But they are doing offensive tri lane against the Anti Mage. Anti Mage went Quelling Blade first, which is actually going to hurt his HP by quite a bit for this early portion of the game. He will be able to pick a Stealth Shield up pretty fast here, but once Weaver pops level 2 as well, the uh, Sukuchi, or I'm sorry, the uh, Geminate attack is going to do double hits on him. So he's going to have to be careful about that one. In the meantime, Earthshaker and Crystal Maiden still in position, threatening the Anti-Mage, and we do a little bit of stacking from Sanking, so it's going to be a support Sanking. Uh, actually, more or less a tri lane in some ways. Anti-Mage Venomancer Sanking versus a Weaver Earthshaker Crystal Maiden. So, going to be kind of a weird situation, but I think the Rainy team has more strength. An early game Weaver has way more kill potential than an early game Anti-Mage. And by early game, I mean like first two levels or so. Anti-Mage can do decent damage, but he's not a ranged hero. He doesn't have as good of positioning, in my opinion, as uh, you do with Sakuchi or survivability. So, I think uh, I'm going to give a slight advantage here to PR to start things off, but... Uh, in the meantime, Wagamama pulling a small camp. Very, very easy XP there. He was trying to get a double pull off, but he did end up uh, being a little bit late for that one. That's because the creep wave dies so fast. So, um, Looks like Illidan actually in a kind of a weird spot. Gets a little bit of mana drain. Does eat a Gale. And he does get Fissure Blocked as well. Wagamama comes through for a Sun. And Illidan in a little bit of trouble. He gets all of his mana drain. This could be his death here. And it is going to be the kill. Big mistake on the Weaver. Getting all of his mana drain there. Great Gale from the Veto. And unfortunately for him, you have to be so careful early game with the Weaver, man. Scoochie cooldown is way too high, and I don't even know. I've done this before myself, but he goes over here, they say, where are the creeps? And they go to check, and they're like, oh, I'm going to do something about it. But all it really does is put you in a weird position, give you some map vision, but it's it's just very dangerous. Oh, Gale is going to miss. Actually, lands on Urshig. He gets a double stun. Wagamama disabling, actually preventing that one. Fishbone going to take a couple hits here. And there's going to be some bugs coming through. Sakuchi and Fishbone is going to end up dying. But that's going to be two heroes dead for PR. Now going towards Wagamama, he needs to run away. His mana is going to get drained here. It is so expensive to cast that early swarm. 100 mana. And all of a sudden, once again, Weaver's going to be completely out of mana again. Even though Anti-Mage here hasn't, doesn't really have any items. He's able to just own up this lane. All of a sudden, Infused, with two quick kills, is in a giant advantage. And let's we'll see if anybody else has died so far in the mix-up. Um, we have Crystal Maiden going down. Weaver is going down, and uh, Tinker has died a second time in the mid lane, apparently. Invoker picking that one up. That was pretty recent. Um, did end up dying. He did purchase his bottle, it looks like, but it's swinging back to base, so. Invoker in the mid lane doing very well. Sorry about missing that one. Thanks. And there's a clarity potion on Weaver, trying to get his mana back up. He does have a Basilius, so his mana region is pretty decent, but I'm going to have to pull the creep wave past here. And I kind of wish he got Geminate, maybe. I feel like an early Geminate is going to do a little bit more than a Swarm. 
All right, I, I, I'm going to make this call. I'm going to say, I would argue, hope for a game coming mid. No, that's just a illusion on Boker. He actually is going Quas Wex, so interesting. Most players are going for the Exhort builds, Quas Exhort builds now because of the small nerfs, but um, I'm going to make the call that an early swarm is hurting Weaver more than it's helping him. 100 of his mana pool is a huge percentage of his mana. It does very, very little contribution. It's okay. It makes the support heroes have to make a choice and lose armor, but a Geminate in the early game is zero mana for a double hit, and I think that is way more valuable at this point. Against an anti-mage, you don't want to drain your mana, because when you run out of mana, no Sakuchi. That's how he died the first time. He casted Swarm, and then he got hit like twice by anti-mage, and then he could not Sakuchi anymore, and that's why he ended up dying, so I would argue Geminate is the way to go, but anti-mage is going to blink past Great Fissure. It's going to do a little bit of damage to the anti-mage, and uh, they will heal up from that one, so... Looks like we have a gank coming top. It's going to be Wagamama from the back. He doesn't actually have uh, Sandstorm, but he does have two levels of stun. Caustic Finale as well. On the bot lane, we'll check the CS totals so far. Both of the heroes are level 5. There's a Soaring Up and Enigma, but we have uh, 28 and 6 on ASDL, the Omni Knight. And for Enigma, he's at 17 and 3. So Omni Knight definitely doing a lot better here in the bot lane. He's got a pretty good animation and uh, purification as well as repel. In case he does get Malefist, he can always stop that damage from coming. And the Eidolons will continue harassing him just a little bit. Creep Wave pushing past level 4. We're going to please pick up Geminate. Thank you. So he does have Geminate up now. And Wegamama continuing to going to do pulling. Invoker now level 6, so 3 levels of Quas, giving him some very, very healthy regen here. And he definitely does have a decent advantage against the uh, Tinker. He's going to eat 1 rocket. Looking maybe for a laser, he will shoot that in a second here, and might actually be able to get a kill. There's a tornado he wants, looks like Invoker wants it as well. There's the cold snap, there's the laser, that's going to give him a couple misses, and might keep Tinker alive here, and he actually had Invoker overextending. Is he going to end up dying? He pops the phase boots, that was so close. That laser was absolutely clutch, because it stopped the cold snap damage from going through. He couldn't hit for three seconds, so laser making a huge impact there on keeping Tinker alive. If it wasn't for the laser mischance, Tinker would have died there, pretty much for sure. So Invoker is going to run back to base, he does pick up his phase boots, so his damage is pretty good now. And Omnia actually going to be aggressive, will he repel this? No, he's going to take two Malefists, might be looking to take some Eidolons. He could actually pick those up with a Purify, which would be great gold, but Mini doing the smart thing and spreading those out so that he doesn't get the easy, easy 100 gold from that one. Off of one cast. He's still going to be looking to do the cast, and there it is, he does pick up one, as well as a ranged creep. He's got Arcane Boots up already, very good fast item choice. It's a little bit easier to do this over a Soul Ring. It's a little bit more reliable kind of thing. Wagamama will scout out the uh, Earthshaker illusions, but I'm going to take a couple little fake punches and be fine. Ring of Health is up on Weaver now, so he does have the regen. It's a Dire Ward in position that's about to run out. Looking for an opportunity. He's going to do a little bit of damage to Fishbone. Great Fissure catching two arrows, and Fishbone is going to end up going down easy there. He does stun through, but Anti-Mage coming in. Pops the ulti. Crystal Maiden goes down next. Couple more hits. Invoker with the Cold Snap. He might end up going down. No, he's got Blink and Tornado now in Wagamama, and that's going to be an easy kill. Invoker picks that one up. Nice gank on the top lane. Early ganks from Invoker. I could have swore he had Phase Boots. What is going on? I swear he had Phase Boots. Unless that was Tinker. I could have swore. I am so confused. I thought for sure that this invoker had a phase boots. Did he accidentally sell his boots or something? Back me up in chat. I think... Did he really accidentally sell his boots? Uh, I don't know. I gotta ask in, in spectators. See if anybody, uh, anybody was watching as well, but not quite. I swear that he had phase. I swear he had phase when he was running away from Invoker. Or I'm sorry, Tinker on the mid lane. Could have swore that he used it there, but all right. Apparently nobody else is paying attention. Um, I guess just let me know, guys. Uh, Omni is going for another heal. He is going to get it off on two Eidolons. Well, not only catching two of the four. Angel is trying to figure out the same thing. I think he must have accidentally sold his phase or something. Because he has no gold either. Look at his gold totals. How many last hits does he have? He's got 22 last hits. He's got 2 kills and all he has is boots and 800 gold. There's no way. There's no way. He must have accidentally sold his phase. That's the only thing that would make sense here. So. I. Yeah, look at that. He bought 2 more blades. I think I think he, he just literally he sold his item, man. He, he literally threw away 750 gold. Just threw away 750 gold. So, <laughs> okay, anyways, so Invoker's starting over again. 
Gonna pick up phase boots just now. That's 750 gold detriment at this point. That's a bracer, man. That's like a lot of farm. And he's actually pretty much equal with Tinker now, despite being ahead of him for quite a while there. So he's gonna take the laser missile. There's gonna be a stun on Weaver. Might go. Sakuchi takes a little bit of mana drain here. He's gonna do a little bit of aggressiveness. Crystal made in with two levels of frostbite now. And might see a chain nuke on anti mage, but with this poor man shield up, he's gonna be blocking lots of the damage from the Weaver. Venomancer is gonna gale on the Crystal Maiden. Crystal Maiden gonna be in some trouble. There's the Fissure trying to stop the initiation stun from Wagamama now. And anti mage might get the kill. Does frostbite Wagamama before he ends up going down. And Tornado's gonna disable him. This could be Wagamama's death. And yes, Illidan's strength picks up the kill. Cold snap on the anti mage now, trying to blink out. He is gonna make it. Taking a little bit more damage, but. Man. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Somebody's saying in chat that they think he actually he was trying to sell branch, but accidentally sold his phase boots instead because he was looking to get a TP, and that would make sense. So, that sucks. That sucks, man. That is a big loss. I'm sure he's frustrated with that one. I actually played a game like that too, a pub game, or it's like a scrim or something. And our uh, our sh we were behind, and our shadow fiend accidentally sold this black king bar. Oh my god, huge black hole! Eidolon's doing the damage. Is he gonna survive? And he's looking, pops the heal, gets six. Eidolon stunned from SK though, and this could be his death here. He doesn't have any more heals, no mana for his ulti, and there's the Malphus. He does go down. Great black hole by Mini there. And on the bright side, and it, the Omni I picked up six Eidolons there, 1,200 gold for him. So, uh, you know, he made up the gold for his death, I guess. But EXP does go to SK now. SK gonna be hitting level six as a result. So. But yeah, I did have a, uh, I played a scrim once where we were behind, and our Shadow Fiend got his Black King bar and then accidentally sold it right after he finished it. <laughs> it was pretty bad. And then we just quit. We were like, okay, we lost. <laughs> that's, that's rough. Um, may not be the impact this game. They're gonna find Tinker on the mid lane, so Invoker coming back doesn't need... He can throw away 750 gold and still win the game. Oh, Wagamama's going for the chain stun. No stun from Earthshaker, and there's the epicenter. Trying to regen, but it's not gonna be enough. Wagamama picks it up. Nice play there. And unfortunately, Rain did not have a Fissure to stop that, uh, epicenter, so... He's got to be unhappy about that one. Pops a salve to heal up an invoker. It's probably sad. Not a good game for him so far. Looks like anti -Mage took a lot of damage here. Does blink past. His ring of health is up. Still going for that uh, battle fury most likely. Yeah, looking for some more Eidolon kills. Three second cooldown. Here he goes. Spreading them out. Good call. And he's going to pick up two. <laughs> Such a weird matchup. Omni Knight farming Eidolons versus an Enigma. And Mini is going to pop his Soul Ring, see if the Repel goes down. Repel yourself. No, he is going to take three Malefus. Oh, Repel's the third one at least. Took a lot of damage there. Actually, that was very beefy amounts of damage. Eidolon's still alive. Mini going to be careful though. He's going for fast mechanism. He's got the Buckler, Lucky, and the Headdress as well. So he's very close to his mech. He's going to have a mech at about... <laughs> yeah, micro battle totally. <laughs> this is like major micro battle down on the bot lane. Who can get the Eidolons? He's got to be a little careful though. Enigma is actually out of mana, but he does have a soul ring. But he is going to be looking to maybe. Yeah, he's just going to go for the easy creeps. Smart decision. There so would be a little dangerous to go on the Eidolons. The range damage from them is pretty high. And let's check CS total so far. It's a 7 7 game. Uh, we have 41 and 9 on the Weaver. Anti Mage is at 30, 40, and 7. So pretty darn equal there. Venomats are at 9, and we have Wagamom at 23. The Dire Other supports. We have 4. On Earthshaker and not pretty much nothing on Crystal Maiden. Mid lane is 32, Invoker and Bot lane is 69 uh, on the Omni Knight with 55 of Enigma. So it looks like the Dire Team slight advantage here. And yes, they are at a slight gold advantage. This is mostly because of the pulling advantage that Infused has by being on the Dire Team. They can pull this creep wave, they can pull this creep wave, and we did do we did see that happening a lot in the early game. So Wagamama looks like he went for a gank, and ASDL ended up surviving using a repel. I love his skill build so far. I think this is very smart. Balancing everything out. Max heal, of course, but Max Repel is very strong and almost needed. Degen Aura is amazing, but against an Enigma, not the best, uh, not the best skill build ever. He's gonna continue getting some last hits, and Mini with that mech up is now very survivable, very likely, very unlikely for Omni Knight to be able to get this kill. But this is a little bit of a problem for PR. I mean, they could have probably ganked this Enigma if they really wanted to. He's gonna possibly go for the heal, but unfortunately, the creeps do despawn, and there he does get a double kill. So, ooh, looks like a gank on the top lane. Fishbone in some trouble. Swarm is down on Anti Mage, and he's gonna actually blink right out, taking some tower damage. But they are gonna trade support, so Illidan in a happy. Ooh, this is gonna see a cold snap. Stun, great stun from SK. He's gonna burrow strike epicenter. The epicenter goes off. Earthshaker is gonna drop immediately, and Anti Mage now pursuing the invoker. Looks like uh, Weaver tried to make something happen, but it doesn't matter. Anti Mage does get the kill, so 
That is a easy kill. TP support from Enigma does the Malefice as well. Invoker goes down. Sorry about changing cameras there as he was being chased, but I wanted to see how uh, Weaver was doing. Weaver pretty much didn't accomplish anything there. Picks up the Perseverance. Treads as well for good HP. And there's the Black Hole. Whoa, Mini is just predicting it. And, and there he comes out. Not going to see a stun from Wagamama. And the mana is drained, but there's the Blink Pass. And they get the kill. Great play by Mini. Holy crap, man. That was good. He didn't even know. He, he didn't have vision, guys. If you're wondering, he didn't have vision. He's like, oh, there's Weaver. And then as soon as the uh, breakthrough damage went in on Enigma, he just black holed the ground, found Weaver. Sakuchi ended, and then they drained his man and killed him. That was a huge play from Mini. And now they're going to turn this into a push immediately, especially with this mech up. And Infuse is looking good this game. There's a tornado coming down. Are we going to see an EMP? Cold Snap is ready to go. SK does a burst strike through. There's a Cold Snap. And he does have a Sandstorm, but a little bit of damage here. And he will be screwed. A little Chain Stun does go invisible. Was just waiting for that Enchant Totem cooldown. And here comes Earthshaker continuing chase. Nice stun through. Wagamama looks like he will up surviving here. Great plays in. Diving going down. There's a Guardian Angel now going to heal up Omni Knight as Weaver pursues this one. Looking for the Geminate. And there it goes. And it's not going to get the kill. Needs to pass through. And he does snag that one. Good time lapse coming back out. Cold feet. Cold snap. Sorry. And Tinker. He's in a lot of trouble. And a little bit of hits from Weaver. Picks that one off. Crystal Maiden now backing off. And Eidolon's trying to make, trying to make it happen here. But it will not be enough damage. So... Great little comeback from PR there. They keep their tower alive. They pick off Enigma as well as the Tinker. And uh, they could be doing, could, can't be doing much better than that considering uh, the loss of the team fight just previously before that one. So, Infused, Anti-Mage takes the mid lane, is doing a little counter pushing, about to finish his battle fury. He's had a pretty good early game so far. A lot of wards are down. Great play from Fishbone getting ready for this one. That is going to clear the creep wave uh, a little slowly, but it will get it done. Crystal Maiden still hanging back, playing it very careful. Maxing out Frostbite first because she wants to counter the Anti-Mage. Absolutely smart item decision. ASDL trying to be aggressive. There's going to be a Glyph Pop. They want to make sure this tower does not go in Deny range. And there's the TPs coming. That's going to be Enigma throwing himself into the ring. Wangamama is level 10 now. So super long range stun as well as his max standstorm. And there's going to be a heal. Great heal on Weaver. One good play there. Omni Knight double stun through. Triple stun actually for Wagamama. Great play. That is such a good play. Go invisible with the Weaver. There's the Entangle or the Frostbite, sorry. A couple more hits. Echo Slam on Wagabama. He will get dropped. Omni Knight picks him off going back into the mix. And it looks like Weaver wants to kill a three second cooldown. There's another Frostbite. And whoa, a little too aggressive on Tinker. His items are not good enough. He doesn't even have boots to travel yet. He's trying to teamfight here. And Weaver's now picked him off two times. Not so good for EGM so far. And the cool play that they really made there. Tornado's going to try to get some vision off. There's the cold snap on Enigma. Couple hits. There's the bugs. A little bit more slow damage. And the Malphys on Weaver. But he's going to dive on past. There's the Repel as well. And one hit. Two hit. Needs one more. And the bugs do pick that up. Three levels of Swarm. Two levels of Geminate. Great skill build so far. And they're going to do a little bit of range damage here. And try to pick off the tower. Illidan's strength might have to time lapse this one. We'll see what he goes for. And he does. Actually, it's going to be Invoker who gets the last hit. He does time lapse. Gets a little bit of HP. But not a huge amount. So, anyways, looks like he may be going for a Lincoln Sphere this game. We'll see what he picks up. But looks in the meantime, Anti Mage taking bot tower as well. And yes, Anti Mage should get the last hit. Battle Fury's up, so he's gonna farm the Radiant Jungle and the Gold Graph. Something I've been neglecting. Sorry about that. 3K advantage now for the Dire Team. 21 versus 18. And Weaver continuing to farm, being aggressive on the top lane. He's got to be a little careful though. Anti-Mage shows up, drains his mana, he will die. But once he gets time-lapse to level 3, it doesn't cost any mana to cast that. And at that point, Weaver is a lot more safe against a hero like Anti-Mage. But Tornado's going to disable Tinker once again. Nice Fissure on two heroes. Cold Snap as well as Mini. He's going to eat a Malphys, though. Does need to go invisible. Is he going to get in time? Is... Oh, barely going down, but the damage is going to be too much. He's going to die from this one. And, uh... I assume... Yeah, he does end up getting picked off. SK should have denied that one. I'm sorry, that was Wagamama. Other team. Diving now past where the tower used to be, and there's the rocket coming through on Earthshaker, he's in a lot of trouble, and yes, Anti-Mage gets the last hit on that one, right off the rocket, it's so far so good for Infused, looking for a little bit more dive back, four wards up on the Crystal Maiden, currently no wards on the map, she's definitely a little behind on that fact, and Evoker a little slow on the Ghost, uh, on the, uh, ghost Walk, as soon as he ate that Malphys, he needed to go invis, but Venomancer did the Gale, the ulti, and at that point the damage was too much, and he ends up picking him off while he was invisible there, so... Um, Tinker gonna pick up a haste rune. 18 minutes into the game, still does not have boots of travel. He's definitely a little underfarmed. And ASDL looking for the chase, but Crystal made a little slow to this one. 
Enigma's running away. There's the Scylla or the Invisibility for the Weaver. Gonna try to line up. Ooh, EGM being aggressive once again. Wants to pick off the Crystal Man. One hit, one missile. Pinks off the kill. Great plays there. Now he's gonna back off super fast with that Haste Rune. And easy, easy kill. One hit, plus the nukes. Those squishy heroes, man. And still, no wards up for the raiding team. Anti-mage from in the bot lane. See how his CS totals are doing. He's up to 107 at the moment. He's got 8 kills. Are you freaking kidding me? He has 8 kills? He got a battle fury at like 15 minutes and he has 8 kills? What is going on in this game? PR. You guys need to end this one soon, I think. Unless you really think Weaver can outfarm, which is a maybe. He's going to get a fast Lincoln Sphere, which will be great against things like uh, Malefice. He's going to go aggressive. The Repel is on him. So you can definitely be aggressive if you want to. Couple hits on Mini. Still has that mech up. And TP's coming in. At B center. Blink strike. Good stun from Earthshaker. And a nice repel as well. Keeping Earthshaker alive. Laser on Invoker now. And the Radiant team's going to back off. Wow, the anti mage ulti tries to sneak that kill. But he had full mana. Just about full mana. Ends up surviving. Another heal coming from the Omniite. There's the invisibility. Nice fissure stopping the initiation. And a great defense from PR there. That was really close. But an awesome repel. Keeping that Earthshaker alive. Blocking that missile damage. That was really good, and that is what is so annoying about playing against an Omni Knight, man. Antimage takes another tower. I think that is his second or third tower at least, but he's got a Yasha, 1,500 gold. He's going to be at a Manta style in any short period of time here. And is Weaver going to be able to stand up to it? I don't know, man. He's going to have like a Lincoln Sphere, which is cool, I guess, but I don't know if that's going to be enough. Alright, Phase and Bracer up on the Invoker. Now he's got his wand as well. Still pretty far away from a Drum of Endurance. He's a little shut down. Partially because he accidentally sold his Phase Boots. Rough day, man. 3-3-3 three, three, and three on him. Anti-Mage still 8-0-1. Oh, pretty crazy stuff. And Wagamama's gonna bottle up a Illusion Rune. Pretty good items. His mana's pretty low, though. So we'll need to boost up his mana before he can do a gank off. And Omnia picks up a mech. Very good item decision. Wand as well. So he is basically very tanky, great supporting. That's going to be coming out of him. And Dire Team picks up a Roshan, which I'm awesome at not looking at any time before it happens because my map awareness is terrible at times. And they are going to guard the Aegis. Looks like Anti-Mage coming in for that one. Good play. It's going to drop an Ironwood Branch. It's a pretty good trade-off. Ironwood Branch, Aegis of the Immortal. Which one's better? Someone's looking to be aggressive. It's going to be Wagamom. His invisibility is ready to go. He's going to be looking for a double stun. He's got an ulti in 10, possibly. And Enigma is running forward. Almost running in. Yeah, there was a ping there. He ran a little bit cl too close to the tower. Right here is within tower of true sight. I wish they gave us a, 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 an AoE, but I think it's about right here. About right here. But I think he did reveal. A couple more drawings on the map. March of the Machines has begun. Just a level 1 March of the Machines. Something huge. And Tinker finally does have his Boots of Travel. So this extremely late Boots of Travel. You need to get this. If you're doing okay... Or you're doing pretty well, you get it about the 12 minute mark, especially now that it's cheaper. Um, some Tinkers have gone Soul Ring first for good reason, because it does allow you to cast like crazy early. But, um, Infuse now pushing out the bot lane a little bit. Manta Style is about to be completed. He's going to transfer a. Oh, wow, he is done with his Manta Style. 21 minute Manta Style, 8 kills up on him, and 153 CS. That is like 70 CS in 10 minutes, which means he's getting like 7 last hits per minute, or something like that. 75, seven and a half last hits per minute. That is crazy, guys. <laughs> uh, so, anyways, going on the tower now. A couple Eidolons doing damage to Plague Wards as well, and it looks like PR is going to be okay with a trade here. I don't know if this is the best decision making that they could make, but the Dire Team does have a gold advantage. They don't necessarily want a team fight. If they can take slightly disadvantageous trades at this point, I think that would be worth it for them. But it's still going to be tough for them to outcarry the game because, once again, it's a Weaver versus an Anti Mage. Never a fun situation, but Infuse is going for the push up to the top. Weaver is going to teleport back to base, pick up his Lincoln Sphere, and he has TP now. Midnight Pulse, but tons of damage being done to the tower. They're probably like, oh my god, he has a Manta style already. I can't believe a tornado. EMP coming through. It's going to drain a lot of mana out of mini. That's pretty huge. And none of these guys actually have Arcane Boots, surprisingly. And unfortunately, this is the first initiation of EMP from what I've seen, at least. So thus far, Infused kind of lucking out. All of these heroes do not have Arcane, which means EMP just destroys them. And they cut corners to go for... Blink Dagger, so Wagabomb the same. If he gets an EMP landed on him, that is obscenely powerful. He needs to pick up Arcane Boots. His team needs to grab a couple Arcane Boots. And Enigma arguably may be the same way. He does have a Belt of Giant Strength, so it looks like he is going for Treads, but hot damn, man. They need mana. 
big time. So if the EMPs continue to land here, it's going to force Infuse to back off and knock, they're not going to be able to engage as a result. So, Anyways, Weaver with that Lincoln Sphere up, Treads as well. Basilius Wand, so he's doing pretty good. Kind of wish he had an Arcane or a uh, Aqual instead, but that's okay. It's just a beautiful item. Just such a beautiful item. Um, Omni Knight very farmed as well, 2300 gold. We'll see what he gets next. I would like to see maybe a Vanguard or a Mana Drain on Region. That's good stuff. Cold Snap now taking a little bit of damage. He will not have Blink Hold on for a bit. Looking, yes, does get the Purification. Tons of pure damage. There's the Epicenter coming from Wagamami. Blinks and Edge Mage does go down straight on the Invoker. Great mech. And there's the Repel now. ASDL popping the ulti. Everybody, Max Armor, Echo Slam, Burst Damage going on to Fishbone. And in the meantime, Weaver is gone. Hey, ooh, Omni Knight almost going down. There's a blink in. Yeah, Weaver is somewhere. Good fissure from ASDL. Blink stun from Wagamama. And there's the Midnight Pulse. He's going to black hole. It's great tornado, though. Going to stop that chain. And a Gale means that Earthshaker will drop into me. He's going to try to clean this up. Blinks forward. Picks off the Crystal Maiden. And that is three heroes dead for PR. Not good for them. Lincoln Sphere still ready to go. But infused winning a great team fight. Good chain of initiation. They got the, they got the anti-mage. I mean, that was a good play, but... He had the Aegis, man. If that wasn't for the Aegis, they may have won that team fight. But Anti Mage came back through, did too much damage there. Now, uh, do we have any Sentry Wards down? Nothing yet. Oop, Blink stun through, going on him. Lincoln gets disabled. Malphite does the time lapse, great play, and immediately going invisible. There's the Tornado EMP. EMP, not the best location there, but it does drain mana out of mini. And Fishbone is surely going to drop here. He does his Arcane, and there, Invoker grabs the last hit. Tier 2 Tower will fall. And Infuse is looking good this round. Most of their mana is missing. 1700 gold now on the Sand King. It's going to be another Haste Rune, or a Haste Rune. And Anti Mage still pressuring the top lane just a little bit here. He's got a Vlad's picked up, so that's more armor for his team, as well as some nice lifesteal. As you can see, he's lifestealing about 30 per hit. Good stuff. Also boosts up his mana regen, which is good. And his mana regen and his team's mana regen. I think it's like 0.8 or something like that. Yeah, 0.8 mana regen. That's a little bit more than Basilius. Basilius gives 0.65. They might find Anti Mage though. There's the spot out Sakuchi is used, and he's gonna continue farming, I guess. But oh my god, he clears. He can like clear Creep Camp before they even get to him. That's ridiculous, man. Continuing to life seal up. He's gonna go for some Ancients next, and he does pick those up. And he is back to full HP. Anti Mage, man, he's good. The good hero, really good hero. A lot of gold still picked up on Fused. I don't, I don't know if they're just saving for buybacks or what. But the Sentry, is this a gem or something? Uh, no gem. This, this must have been their Sentry. Not really sure why they dewarded that so late, but not quite sure. Earthshaker with the wand up. He's got 900 gold. Probably gonna try to save straight for the Blink Dagger, but I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know if they're gonna make it in time. Tinker counter pushing the top lane in the meantime. And Weaver is coming through. And we're going to see a Fissure. We'll see if he TPs in time. There is going to be the Bugs. And looking for the Enchant Totem. It does land. Stops his TP. And that is going to be his death. Great play by Reigns getting there just in time. Weaver has zero stuns. Tinker made the smart play. Try to teleport out. Maybe I would have tried to juke through the trees first. But he did have Bugs on him either way. So there was a vision. So I think that was a good decision by Tinker. But unfortunately, he didn't make it out in time. So great play by Earthshaker to stop that TP out and give Weaver a much needed kill. He's actually got a Ghost Scepter up. So I don't know if he had that before he died. But uh, I don't know if you can Ghost Scepter and TP out. I think you used to not be able to do this. I think they should fix that myself. But I think that that's a perfectly legitimate strategy in my opinion. But kind of hard to say. Maybe it's not Maybe it's not fair. Maybe it would make Heroes Without Stuns too useless, I guess. But we will never know. Uh, at least for not for now. I'll look it up later, perhaps. Alright, Fishboat on the mid lane. Arcane Boots is finally finished for him. What is the Arcane Boot check? Uh, Sand King actually going for a Boots of Travel instead. Um, that's not what I wanted. I want F5. There we go. Giving them Arcanes. We have one Arcane. Treads up on Anti-Mage. Boots of Travel Tinker. Boots of Travel Sand King. And just regular Boots on Enigma at the moment. Probably is going Treads because he still has that Belt of Giant Strength. Might be a gank coming for Weavers, up to 2k gold now. Probably will go Radiance. Enigma looking to do a blink initiation. There's the Midnight Pulse. No, he is not going to go for it, so... Um, he can't blink Malphus. Blink his fear disable that. He would have to blink Black Hole and get follow-ups. Possibly from Anti-Mage draining his mana, which is definitely not too hard. He's going to take a little bit of damage. Does go invisible here. Um, if, for example, if uh, Weaver was Black Hole, that's like 3 seconds of disable, 4 seconds of disable. 
Uh, four seconds to disable, and then he can jump in Manta Split, drain all of his mana and get the kill. But he probably, is he 16? He is 16, so he could actually time lapse out of that if he survives. Sentry Ward almost getting the vision, anti mage still looking to be aggressive. Wants to drain his mana here, goes invisible once again. Does a little bit of damage, takes a little bit of battle for your damage as well. There's the bugs, Manta Split, he blinks out. EMP as well is going to be used, but not going to land on anybody there. Did that actually drain mana from Enigma? I'm not sure. There's the uh, Lincoln Sphere, Omni Knight being aggressive with Repel. And he's going to pick up a ultimate, or possibly good for a sheep stick. I would actually love to see a sheep stick on Omni Knight. This is a very cool item. Makes me want to play Omni Knight. Usain King getting vision as well. Crystal Maiden still very squishy. 758 HP, but he does have pretty... She does have decently powerful skills to use. Malphus is going to land AD. SDL pops the repel. Takes good damage, though. There's the Blinken. Wagamama thinking about There's the channel. Here comes the Epicenter. Great stun from Earthshaker. Stops that Epicenter. Very nicely done. Omni Knight pops his ulti as well, so he'll be regening up very nicely as they pursue this one. Stun from Sand King coming through on two heroes. And there's the nice heal on Earthshaker. Illidan's strength is still alive, but Anti-Mage blinks through. Picks out the Crystal Maiden. There's a Repel on ASDL, and he is going to get blocked a little bit as Anti-Mage picks up the kill. Nice blocking there. Stun through by SK, and they're going to clean up the Radiant team. Nice play, and they grab the Weaver. Weaver running through. Did they have a gem? I don't even know, man. Gem? Yes, Sand King picks up a gem, so... Does purchase a gem. Gem ends up giving them a 5 kill advantage. 5 for nothing against PR. And it looks like Infuse is going to take the win in the first round here. It's not over yet, but this creep wave will be cleared. We're going to see the mid racks fall for sure. Might see the, the, I'm sorry, the top racks fall for sure. Might see the mid racks immediately afterwards. And there goes the melee barracks. We'll see if they take the range. Yes, they will take the range. Are they going to shift? I would love to see them shift. I think they need to here, and I think they definitely can. Uh, Regent is going to take a little bit of damage here, but he will lifesteal up on the creeps. going to pull some of those through. They do have a catapult, which also helps out, but primarily their entire team here is here and ready to go. Crystal Maiden going to try to slow this down, perhaps waiting for the team to come up. Ursh, or Invoker, sorry, respawning. And he has virtually no items. There's the AoE still. Wagamama thinking about going in. And ASDL doing the same. Might see a repel. There's the EMP. Going to drain some mana, but we're going to see the range and the melee barracks fall here. Malphus now, and Wagamama is going to stun through. Takes a little bit more damage. Invoker trying to do as much as possible. ASDL a little bit too far forward. Takes the burst damage, and Crystal Maiden might end up going down here. We'll see. There's the Arcane. There's the Frostbite. More missiles. He is just about to die. There's the Blink forward. Almost getting the kill. Cold Snap. Cold Snap. There's the Cold Snap. Couple more hits. Anti Mage in some trouble. Has enough for one Blink. Stunned through by SK now. And we're going to see the Gale land on Weaver. It's going to slow him down by quite a bit during the team fights, but EGM going a little too far aggressive, draining all of his mana from the EMP. And Missile's going to nail on Invoker, as well as the Omni Knight. Bugs are going to start things off. There's too much stuff. MP Sander comes through. Radiant Team goes down. Invoker, as well as Omni Knight. There's a Fissure hitting a lot of heroes here. Earthshaker's got to be so careful. Viper, or Weaver, trying to run away, but <laughs> that gem is too much, man. Invoker, or anti mage hitting too hard, and this is going to be the win. Infuse taking the win in the first round. PR gets t dropped out, and a good win for Infuse. So, uh, that's it for game one, guys. We'll be back in just a second. We have an entire... 64 team tournament to cast here. It should be like five rounds or something. Uh, actually, it might be more. I guess it's more. It's probably like. No, I guess it's still the same amount of time. It should still be only five rounds total. So, should have about five, six games. And uh, yeah, also that registration for Qualifier 4 are still open. Go check out play.ghostofgamers.net if you guys want to see the tournament brackets as well. If you want to see who uh, Infuse is going to be up against in the next game, go check that out. So that is it. Alright, so we'll be back in a second, guys. Don't go anywhere for more uh, Ghostly League Qualifier number 3 every Wednesday and Saturday. And uh, we'll be back in just a second with the next game. Don't go anywhere. And there's the final screen. I'll let you guys look at that. I'll give you five.